questions, curiosity, creativity, ideas. You know, these are the secrets to scientific breakthroughs and possibly Nobels along the way. But Nobel or no Nobel, the key is creating the environment to nurture curiosity-driven science and blue sky research. And long-term investment is the only way we can continue to make progress in what impacts our lives. I wanted to examine where Korea stands, part two of our four-part weekly feature. We come into the world curious. With nurturing, that curiosity remains with us throughout our lives. Sometimes curiosity leads us in an unusual direction. Knowledge is a journey. Who knows where research can take you? When I was a child, I remember the Nobel Prize being a dream. But since I began my research, the Nobel Prize wasn't something I was concerned about. Most of the matter in the universe is dark. Without dark matter, galaxies and stars would not have formed and life would not exist. It holds the universe together. But what is it? That's the ultimate question that brought Yanis Simarsides from a lab in New York to Korea, to this pristine lab. At the center of this 7.6 million U.S. dollar per year research project led by this distinguished Greek-born U.S.-trained physicist, the quest for Axion. Call it a cavity, and this is our basic axion detector. Almost everything we do right now is using cylinders like this. These gleaming cylindrical apparatus of copper and gold are prototypes of a device that might one day answer a major mystery about the universe by detecting a particle called the axion, a possible component of dark matter. But in this unit, we have this dement, this size, so imagine. We had the cavity over there. We could have mounted it in here. This will go down to 4 Kelvin, which is minus 269 C. Wow. But physicists don't know what the axion's mass is, so they have to scan for it, tuning the resonant frequency of the cavity with rods of copper or sapphire. It'll take years for a single device to cover the whole range of possible frequencies. This kind of module is the first ever to be tried. The advantages of this cavity compared to others is that it lacks end caps. Because the whole thing is in a continuous shape, we can increase the volume much more easily. It's a new cavity that we're trying out and we'll run more experiments with it. But here's a catch. No one knows whether axions even exist. It's the kind of high-risk, high-reward project that many basic scientists in Korea aren't used to just yet. So what if they end up finding no such particle exists? It would be great because uh, we, we, our goal is not really detecting the external and we really truly believe there is an action. This is not research. If we find out oh, there is no external, then also we figure it out. In his quest to find the axion, CAP is chasing a high-profile rival in the United States, the Axion Dark Matter Experiment, based at the University of Washington in Seattle. That team was on for uh, more than 20 years now. They, they are doing great. They are very smart people, the best scientists in the world, and so on. And we are challenging their, uh, their position. So in five years, we will be the best Axion experiment, we will have the best Axion experiment in the world, no question about it. If CAP succeeds in finding Axion, it will not only transform Korea but rewrite physics. Because I want Korea to be able to produce Nobel Prizes year after year, and it is the attitude that will make this possible. Dr. Liu Ryong is a globally recognized chemist, the recipient of many prestigious awards around the world, often cited by Thomson Reuters as a future Nobel laureate in chemistry. Zeolite's nanoporous systems are an ideal template for the synthesis of three-dimensional graphene architecture, but the high temperatures required for their synthesis cause the reactions to occur non-selectively. We lowered the temperature required for the carbonization by embedding lanthanum ions, a silvery white metal element in zeolite pores. The breakthrough discovery was published in Nature, one of the world's most prestigious scientific journals. 
But it wasn't overnight that Liu Dong and his team could solve this centuries-old conundrum. It took them 17 years to arrive at the Eureka moment. Why? For what? It's the scientist's curiosity and love for challenge. What's key for a scientist is creativity and originality. That means the society needs to let scientists explore, take risks, go for that blue sky research. But there isn't much research in Korea free from the pressure to produce results, the outcome. It's like Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed, I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Research in basic science starts with a question, curiosity. And if along the way they happen to discover something, that's good. Most of the time, you won't. We may produce two or three results out of 100 tries. We need to be able to embrace failure and not dwell on the results. Korea needs to create a system where researchers can do what they want to do for 10, 20 years. Take your chances, these scientists say. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Go for it. Because for curiosity-driven scientists to thrive, for blue sky research to survive, we need to be able to say, it's okay to fail. Moon Gonyoung, Arirang News.